Hey you guys, Dirt Pit Long the Most Target says I hope you're having a good day. Gotta get you caught up. I told you the other day what I was gonna go over. What me and Mason got taken care of the other day. Mason's learning for all the ones out there that are not mechanically knowledgeable, that know how to get in a car and rut drive it. Let's go over a little bit of internal combustion engine. Mason, have you learned anything lately? He's learned a little bit. He's our he's gonna be our baseball star. He's trying to move into the pitcher position. Let's go over what we did. We got a lot done the other day, a lot faster than I thought it would ever happen. As you can see, we have our motor disassembled, not completely. This is a 400 small block Chevrolet engine. It has been bored 10 over. Boring, what boring means, boring one 10 over, that means it's 10 over the factory bore. So boring is when you make these cylinders bigger because the cylinders either get a scratch or they get rust or they're pitted. So if your car is smoking, what happens is, let me get over here to this, is you'll have wear on the inside of those cylinders or you'll have scratches and oil is getting past your rings. These are your rings on here. And as you can see, all these rings are locked tight up. They're not, they're, the rings, there's, there's three or four rings on this cylinder. You got an oil ring and you got scraper rings. Well. What happens is, is oil gets past those rings and it makes your engine smoke. Now we're going to go over a little parts diagram, just a short, sweet engine basics. These are your pistons. This big round thing, that's your piston. This is your piston rod. And let me go over bearing. When I first, when I was like 12, I didn't know what a bearing was. I, I knew what a bearing was, like a wheel bearing. It's round, it's got little ball bearings in it, or it's got needle bearings in it. Not on engines, not on rod bearings. This is your bearing. So what happens is, is it rides on the crank, like this right here. Got a bearing here, and then you got your your uh, rod cap that goes over top of this, and it has a bearing as well. Let me show you. These are the cranks. These are for the crank here. But this is the bearing. So if you hear a knock in your motor, real hard, these bearings have gone out and when they go out and they're excessively worn it'll create slack between here and here so this right here is bouncing up and down on the crank making that noise so piston rods rod bearings okay this is your pin that holds the pistons in now i'll get you a little up to date on something else these are the rod caps these are rod caps, and you see a bearing goes in there. This is what holds the rods around your crank. That's a crank, that big old thing. It's supposed to be beautiful and shiny, and it is not. That can be cleaned up. It can be, more than likely, I'll be able to get all that off of there. Uh, you can do electrolysis. You can do a, uh, um, you can not sandblast it, but bead blast it to get it clean. You can do that. Here's your block, these are your cylinders. As you can see, four on each side, that means it's an eight cylinder, a V8, and why is it called a V? Because your pistons come up in a V. See, from here to here, that's your V8. These right here are lifters. Say you got an older vehicle, you crank your car up and it's ticking. So like a ticking in the top of the motor. What happens is, is these are hydraulic lifters. They have to, they have to fill up with oil. What these do is these work off the crank or, or off the camshaft. The camshaft comes up. The camshaft's got a bunch of different lobes. You see the different lobes on this? Well, the, cr the camshaft has a bunch of different lobes. And those lobes, the lifters sit on those lobes. So the, all these come up at different times. Well, they'll come up and take a push rod. A push rod goes through here up to here onto a rocker arm. So it'll move the rocker arm. So if you're ticking a lot, you, you think you got a lifter going bad, what people say? Well, they're not they're not pumping up and when they don't pump up what you hear is the push rod is got got that got a gap in between it and the rocker arm so it's just sitting there hammering like sound like a leprechaun with a dang ball peen hammer inside your engine that's the basics so internal combustion what is internal combustion you'll have a head on top of here it'll have valves valve springs it'll have rocker arms and push rods that go down through it so your carburetor intake sit right here and what it does is it shoots gas and air into, into each one of these. Wow, look at that. Look how bad that's pitted. That's horrible. I don't know if we can get that out. I'm just going a few over. 
Ooh, that's horrible. Did you see how deep that is? Uh, look at this. That's horrible. That's going to be probably 30 over to get that out. Wow. So, all an internal combustion engine does is controlled explosions. It's controlled explosions. The cylinder explodes, it pushes the piston down, which when it's on the crank, as you see the crank's got different, it's got different positions like this right here all the way around it. So the controlled explosions, this will come up, that one will go down, this will come up, that one will go down, back and forth, and it's just a medley of explosions constantly forcing the piston back down, which turns the crank, which turns your camshaft, and then all the camshaft does is open and close to let in intake, which would be your fuel and air, and to let out exhaust. That's all the camshaft does is it is in charge, it is in control of breathing. Your crank is in control of creating, or not creating, of displacing the explosions. Why? Because the end of that crank right there is what is attached to the torque converter. See that big round thing? That's a torque converter. That's on the inside of your transmission. This crank takes the explosion, sends it through the torque converter into your transmission. Your transmission takes one bit of power and converts it into higher and lower powers with gears and pumps. So it can take one RPM and put a smaller or bigger gear on it and make it more. It makes more out of the RPM that you already have. Then it converts it to your rear end, which also transfers the power. So parts list again, engine block. This right here is your cam. It goes all the way through. These are your lifters. These are your cylinders. Now, if somebody says my head gasket blue, the, the, I guess the weakness of a small block Chevy is this small distance in between each one of these cylinders. Usually if you have, if you run your car hot and you run, you blow a head gasket on a small block Chevy, it's going to be in between these right here because you see how little metal there is in between here. It's let, it's less likely to blow out here than it is here. So when you blow out a head gasket, the gasket blows and you're losing compression and or water. So a lot of people, you, you blow a head gasket, you'll get water in your oil. That's bad. But all it takes is either a piece of paper or a metal gasket over top of this. Now, anytime you have a head gasket blown, you may need to make sure that your head is still straight, that your deck is still straight here. You'll have to put a straight edge across it to make sure you can't see any daylight through it. That's when you have to go to the machine shop and get it cut down level. Seeing that, I don't know if you can see it from there. Let me see where my camera's at. Seeing those pits right there, all across the top edge, that is disastrous for this engine. You will have to cut it back. And the worst part about it is the more you cut this and make it thinner, because each one has to be exact. The more you make that thinner, the more likely that you can run it hot in the future and eventually lose your motor. So block cylinder lifters camshaft goes right through the middle the timing chain goes right here this is your timing chain it's connected to what to your crankshaft and your camshaft this is the timing chain cover this is your torque converter it converts the torque from the motor into your transmission this is your harmonic balancer it goes on the front to balance out the crank this is the flywheel. You need your flywheel because your starter shoots out, grabs the teeth on the flywheel, and turns the motor to crank it. This is your crankshaft. We're going fast, I know. These are your crankshaft bolts. This is what holds your, your main bolts in your crankshaft. This is your oil pump. When you have low oil pressure, this right here, that screen right there, you see how goobed up it is? That screen can be stopped up, or sometimes if this right here rotates, Sometimes when you put your engine back together, these aren't far enough down in the oil. These are your rod caps. These go over top of your what? Your piston rods. Got all that. These right here are your mains. This is what bolts the crank down. And you have another bearing surface right here. This is the one for your, for your main seal here. You put a seal here. It seals this on the motor and over top of the crankshaft to keep the crankshaft from moving. But all of these right here are the mains this is what holds down your crankshaft all four of these and every one of them the bearing was in good shape on so that's what you have to do to rebuild these things is you have to normally on your rebuild you'll 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 deck it that means you'll smooth the top of the engine down 
you'll bore out your cylinders. When you bore out your cylinders, depending on how large the cylinder has to be, you'll have to buy either new pistons or you can get oversized rings. Okay, those rings have to be able to move. And what they do is they drag down the, the rod, the piston is just a slight bit smaller than the cylinder because it has to move in there freely. These rings, their only job is to drag oil down the cylinder wall to complete the seal without binding. In here, you've got many moving parts. You got this is your, your piston rods in here. This rod is what holds your holds your piston in. You can't have movement side to side, and you and you can't have excessive. See that movement right there? You can't have excessive movement there. I don't think that one has the. Yep, they're good. Okay, but you can't have movement side to side here like this. It's supposed to move that much, but it can't be like from here like that. And it's got to move freely here because that pin right there can wear out, and then there's wrist pins that hold these pins in. It's just a little funky looking. Um, Kind of like a carter key that you use in your axles and stuff well they make a little wrist pin that's supposed to go in there and hold those in uh and of course remember got to change your bearings this looks nothing like the bearing i thought about when i was a child so that's the basics to a small block chevy the heads i have in the building as you know from looking it looks absolutely trashed and to do this engine right it's going to need more than likely new pistons these pistons are not that old uh, the pistons can probably be cleaned up. I don't think the rods, I don't think any of this is damaged at all. Um, best set case scenario would be we can ball beat it and get this cleaned up, the block cleaned up, and get a new set of rings and put in them because those have been stretched because they've been sitting in the same position so long. Best case scenario is we ball hone this, just clean it up real good, clean all the parts and put them all back together. Um, more than likely what will happen because I still ain't got the, cam the camshaft out and haven't got the uh, lifters out. Uh, more than likely this is going to be a full rebuild. I mean it's going to be a full rebuild. Uh, just the machine work alone to get make the block the way, to make the block new and usable. You can have anywhere from a thousand to two thousand dollars wrapped up in just redoing the block. Just redoing the block. And then once you start working on your heads you can buy a set of aluminum heads, which are higher performance. They're lighter weight. They're cooler. They have they they're better performing. They let more air out and more fuel in. A good set of aluminum heads are seven hundred to twelve hundred dollars. A great set. Some heads go up to be ten thousand dollars. Some internal combustion engines make just like the ones the the nitro dragsters. Some of those make forty thousand horsepower. <laughs> it's insanity. And we want to give up steel. We want to give up durability that's made us the greatest country in the world for 100 years. We want to give that up for, for deep pits in the earth where little African children, three and four years old, are getting cancer from being 50, 60, 200 yards on their hands and knees in the ground digging up highly toxic minerals. We're going to give up American innovation for total destruction of the earth. There is nothing green about electricity. There is nothing green about electrified cars. There's nothing healthy about it. It is worse on the environment than the little smoke that comes out of these. It's toxic. And as you hear your friends... right over my home. Every day, all night. I'm Stuart Pidlong, the most targeted says, you got any questions about small block Chevys, about general internal combustion engines, please let me know. Don't, listen, it's just parts. It's just metal pieces and you buy a tool and you learn to take stuff apart. The best way to learn how to fix something is start tearing small things apart. It's nothing to it. It's just compression. It's just air, fuel, spark. It's all it takes to make an engine purr. I'm Stuart Pidlone, the most targeted citizen. Good luck. God bless. Like, share, and subscribe. I love you. Jesus loves you. See ya.